up, everybody? It's your girl, D. Dominguez. Welcome to Parlor Talk, the conversation behind the hair. Flip the new I d- colored hair today. I can't flip because, you know, but I can Toss. shake. I can shake the curls. Toss it. Shake the curls. Anyways, welcome to Parlor Talk, guys. We have an amazing episode today for you guys today. We have an amazing guest. We have a live audience that can chime in and, you know, communicate and, and give their their opinions on the topics that we're going to be talking about today. So we're trying to do things a little bit different. We're getting feedback from our audience, from you guys, and we're just giving you guys what you guys are asking for. So welcome to Parlor Talk today. How are you guys doing? All right. It's your girl, Anya Phoenix. It's, I'm going to say it's a fabulous Monday. Oh, okay. I mean, it wasn't. You haven't said nothing positive about Monday, like, since we started, but okay. We're here. Ooh, okay. We got audience. Yes. So that is fabulous. Okay. And we got the one and only. Mari G. Yes. Hey. She needs no introduction. Oh, she is. I'm going to let you introduce, introduce yourself. Introduce myself. Which, yes. Which want me to, how you want me to? So look at your camera. I don't know which one's right there. Okay. My camera. Okay. Hey. Who you is? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Mari G, uh, a.k.a better known as Marissa Gonzalez, but Mari G in the streets, Ooh. professionally and personally, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, born and raised in Patterson, New Jersey. I've been in Southwest Florida since 2004. Graduated college here, started my professional career here, and I've just evolved through the years into who people know as Mari G today. Awesome. And for those of you who don't know, so this last um, Sunday, yesterday, um, it was the... Um, Latin festival, Latin food festival, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. Mighty G and myself, we both received awards as um, leading Latinas here in Southwest Florida. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I am very happy, very thrilled because yeah. as Latinas, you know, we're minorities, yes. not only just for being Latinas, but being women, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the fact that we have representation, the fact that we are doing work with our community and for our community is amazing. Yes. The award is great and I appreciate it and I love it. However, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. Absolutely. And this is a call to all our, not just Latina, everybody as a community, we need to come together and do more stuff for with our kids. Our kids are our future. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know about you, but at 14, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. I don't think so. none of us was. No, I let's just put it this way. My mom put me in Catholic school because I was getting into so many fights. Mm, and you didn't fight in Catholic school? Surprisingly, no. I think people were afraid of me at that point because I was the only minority. Mm. It was a Catholic school, so there wasn't a lot of Spanish. There was a lot of Italians okay. and not a lot of Spanish people. There you go. My bad. Uh, she good. She I good. I, f- I know the right button now. Ah. <laughs> There we go. Is that better? Uh, ooh. Ooh. Well, we're going to save that for, be careful. for our segment, <laughs> Spicy Talk. How were you as a child? I was quiet. I was a tomboy. I grew up with brothers. Um, so I didn't have a lot of like, I had girlfriends, but everything in the house was growing up with my brother. So I've been wrestled to death. I've been <laughs> boxed to death. Literally, no. My brother body slammed me one time and I stopped breathing. Ooh, like had ooh, to run down the stairs with yeah, me in his arms. I like I freaked out because I wasn't breathing. So yeah, it was interesting being a girl growing up with brothers in the WWE mm. era. Night. Yeah, I remember that because I have two older brothers as well. How is um, your transition right here coming from Jersey to Florida? How was that for you? I cried the whole car drive here. It was a total culture shock. Like... Everybody said my freshman year was going to be horrible. My freshman year was like my best year, hands down. And I had so much fun and I knew so many people. And then we moved here and I'm like, but where's the corner store? Where are the (laughs) sidewalks? Why don't I see a public bus? Like it was totally different. Yeah, Mm -hmm. totally. And I was so independent in Jersey. Like I would walk from one side of Patterson to the other. No problem. Like no issues. And I come here and now it's like, well, you can't leave the front street. And I'm like, what? Yeah, plus you came here when nothing was, nothing. was here. Nothing. Cape and I Coma? was in Lehigh. No, oh, I was oh in even Lehigh. worse. I lived in Lehigh. First that was the moved, woods. I lived across the street from Andros Isles, if you know anything about Lehigh. And then we moved over by Bell Boulevard, and we were okay. literally one of two mm-hmm. houses on the block. There was woods on both sides, woods across the street. 
we had a house behind us and then there was nothing but wood. It, That's definitely wood. a culture shock right there. Yeah. Going from Patterson, New Jersey to Lehigh, mm-hmm. Florida. Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. So how has been your upbringing here in Florida? Um, like after you moved, like how was it like as a teenager? It was an adjustment for sure. I was the girl, say water, say coffee. Ask me to say it one more time and I'm going to revert back to the girl who keep, who was fighting all the time. Like it was just annoying being always that girl that stood out for something. Uh, but after oh, I yeah, started. we didn't have accents like that uh, here. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Now, you know. Now you can't tell I'm from Jersey unless you get me mad. So, which I guess is a good thing. It's part of growth, right? Um, But no, after, you know, all of that passed, started getting friends here, joined choir and some other extracurriculars in school and normal, I guess you could say. Okay. Crazy. No more fights. No, nothing crazy like your friend Akeisha. It calmed me down. It calmed me down. Yeah. I guess you could say they calmed me down. Yeah. So you came to a more peaceful place. I guess so. But was it peaceful? I mean, compared to up was, north. I mean, it's when we, definitely peaceful compared to up north. But when you're so used to, like, I need noise mm-hmm. and it's so quiet here. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to have three fans going just so I can get noise to actually, like, peacefully fall asleep. See, I moved here oh, for no. the peacefulness and the quietness because I couldn't stand the, all the, the fast taste of up north mm-hmm. and the constant, you know, going. Like, I, I was done with that. See, but at 14, I, like, that's all I That's knew. True. I loved, That's what you That's I loved it. Yeah. yeah. So now as an adult, I know you have multiple businesses. Mm-hmm. Would you like to share what your businesses are? Yes, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I formulated Mari G Solutions last year. So officially registered as a business last year. And it started with HIV education and advocacy that were based off of my personal story. And mixed into that was a lot of self-love body positivity and things of that nature, just really taking my life and using it for good. I was bullied a lot as a kid, Mm -hmm. i.e. why I was fighting all of the time. Um, So I use a lot of those experiences to be able to help other people. So Mm -hmm. I've partnered with a lot of nonprofit organizations just to do like speaking engagements with teens and, and things like that. And then I found myself wanting to get out of corporate America, trying to find something else. And I found myself in the financial education space, which I thought was interesting because I never thought that I would be in the space, but it really started with your girl had bad credit. (laughs) I met somebody who said I could fix your credit and you could make money while you fix your credit. And I'm like, oh, word. So I was like, well, why not make money and fix my credit at the same same time? time. So that's how I got started on that journey as far as a financial literacy education um, consultant. And then my business kind of took a turn. Um, We had... Some things happened with the company. They had to go under investigation. Thankfully, they beat that. They, you know, anytime you hear about credit, there's always this notion yeah. about it's a scam. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. All of this other stuff. So at some point, companies are always under the spotlight, right? So we ended up going under the spotlight. Our company got shut down for six months. So I had just walked away from my corporate America job, doing great in my financial business. And now what do I do next? Mm-hmm. And I was presented with an opportunity to learn about solar and I was the girl that my mom would say somebody knocked on her door. And I'm like, don't talk to those people. I don't think it's just you. I think the majority of Hispanics. Hispanics yes. be yeah. Like if I if I if my doorbell rings and I'm not expecting anybody, right. I'm not getting up to open. Right. Because if you didn't call me before you came over, mm-hmm. um, that's rude. Right. I'm not opening the door. Mm-hmm. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Do we still have door to door salesmen? There is. Yes. Still, yes. Roofers. There are still, now yeah. after oh, yeah. Ian, um, roofers. Solar panel you got solar, people, you have um, water system water people, people. You got camera people, yeah. security people, security. yeah, all kinds mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. yeah, I was never one that. So I did end up getting into solar after I learned about it. I learned how valuable it really is and how much bigger it is than just people being able to save money and mm-hmm. saving our plan and all of that stuff. Like, there's so many components that go into it that I'm like advocate now for solar. Um, but there are still a lot of people that do door to door. I'm not one that does door to door sales because I'm more personable. I'm always in networking events and connecting with mm-hmm. people and things like that. I like building relationships. Um, so I don't do a lot of door to door, but there are people who do door to door and <laughs> crush it, make a killing. That's that's just not me. So you did mention about how you go and do different events and mm-hmm. teaching about HIV. Is that some is that part of your story? Something you want to share? Yeah, sure. 
So I so moved here, like we said, 2004. So all of my adult life, if you want to say, was here in Fort Myers. So, you know, all the clubbing, all the dating, you know, all of that stuff that we should be were doing a, as we're, we're older. Were you a Celsius chick? Celsius? <laughs> I was a Neo girl. I can't even lie. I was a Neo girl. Jamaican Sunday. Okay. You always find me at Neo's. Um, but I ended up getting into a relationship with this guy back in 2015. And I've always been the kind of girl that, like, I'm going to be your ride or die. Like, mm-hmm. it's one and that's it for me. I've never been the type of person to date multiple people. One night stands, like, I've never been that kind of girl. No shade to people that are. That just, that just wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got in a relationship with this guy. And he wasn't as faithful as I thought he was or as he was saying he was. And ended up going for just a regular woman's health checkup. And thankfully, my doctor was proactive in making sure that I got all of that testing. And I say the word thankfully and proactive because in the healthcare field, unfortunately, not a lot of medical providers do that. Mm -hmm. Um, There's also still this big notion, even like there's so much stigma in the world, period. But there's still so much, I don't want to say stigma, but there's so much miseducation even within the healthcare field that I have people that I've spoken to, they're like, I've been married for I don't know how long and I've been with my gynecologist for so long and they've never offered me to get testing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, it's because you're married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's Mm -hmm. still this, you know, whole bunch of miseducation within the healthcare field. So I say thankfully and proactive because she took those extra steps to make sure, you know, even though I was at that point in a relationship, but I was having a sexual partner, she was like, we're still going to test you. We've tested you for X amount of years because I've been, she was my doctor for like six years at that point. Um, And she's like, we're still going to, nothing's changed. You ain't married or it doesn't matter even if you are, but she's like, you're still sexually active. We're going to make sure we do the testing. Which is what it should be. Right. Yeah. And she did the testing and came back positive. Will you how was that? Yeah. How did you react? Oh, girl, I boohoo cried. I was angry. I screamed. I said, you need to bring his ass in here now. She was hella confused. So I have to give some backstory there, right? So him and I, like, it was... One of those, we broke up, and then we were, like, kind of still messing with each other, but we broke up, but we were... But the day that I got... How old were you? I was 26. Okay. The day that I got the call from the doctor's office saying that they scheduled me an emergency appointment was the day that I actually was like, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore. He was supposed to come to my house, get all of his stuff. On his way to my house is when I got the call from the doctors. (sighs) And I'm like... I don't know what you gave me. It was a whole thing, right? Of course, a whole thing. I was like, I'm leaving. You How could do you, come or not. At that moment when you got that phone call and they told you you need to come in as an emergency appointment, did you know something was wrong? Oh, absolutely. I already knew something was wrong. I didn't know the what, but mm-hmm. I already knew something was wrong. Yeah, because the doctor don't just randomly call you to come in. Right. And I had, she's been my doctor for six years. We've been through this rodeo for six years of her making sure that I got tested mm-hmm. for STDs, STIs, all of it. Never had an a call before mm-hmm. for an emergency appointment. And I've worked in healthcare. Yes. Even though I worked like mm-hmm. from the insurance side, I still mm-hmm. worked inside a medical office. So, you know, I kind of knew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I got that call, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I knew something was up, but I didn't know the what. Definitely didn't know the what. So did he come with you? So he ended up coming. He had to work at three o'clock. My appointment was at two. Um, so he ended up following me there. They took forever to see me in. So I had a three o'clock appointment or two o'clock, whatever time the appointment was. They didn't see me until all of the other patients left. And I'm like, why did you schedule me an appointment to come in so early if you're still not going to see me until the end of the day? Mm -hmm. And it was basically uh, the doctor wants to give you the time she needs to give with you. And to add context, because some people are like, well, what does that mean? Like, it wasn't from a stigma perspective. It wasn't that she wanted to get all of the the other people out. No, No, it was that... She wanted to make sure that she understood the severity of the information she was about to give me. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to make sure that it wasn't a, okay, your 15 minutes are up. I got to go to my next appointment. Yes, exactly. She wanted to make sure that whatever time I needed, I was going to get. Got it. So. So. Which is a great doctor. I will say. I will say. She moved to Virginia. She was like, you could come. I was like, no, I can't. (laughs) Not to Virginia. not going to Virginia. But yeah, she was a great doctor. Shout out to Dr. Fish. She's somewhere in the world. So. How did, walk us through the conversation in the room. Was he there in the room when you got the... Not in the initial part, no. So after she gave me the news, again, 
instant boohoo crying, mad. He needs to bring his ass in here, real feisty Puerto Rican. And she was confused. And I'm like, oh, he's outside mm -hmm. in his car. Mm. So they went out. The nurses went out. They brought him in. He sits down in the chair. I'm sitting on the exam table, sobbing. Mm -hmm. She sits in the chair and she looks at me. A lot of people don't know um, that it's actually a violation like, against the law to diagnose or to disclose someone's HIV status without their permission. Yes. yes. So she looked at me. She said, do you give me permission to share with him what I've shared with you? I said, yes. Um, so she told him, you know, Marissa tells me that you are the only person that she's been in a relationship with sexually active. Um, you had never had sex with anybody else before him? Before him, yes, but not like in that time that we were together. And again, okay. I've gotten tested every year. Mm -hmm. So year before it was negative, year before that it was always negative. And then it just so happened, you know, the, the year only that we had been the together. The only different difference is right. him. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, so she said, you know, Marissa has explained to me that you guys are in a relationship. You're the only person that she's been sexually active with over the last 12 months or whatever. Um, her HIV test came back positive. And his head just kind of went down and I'm just sitting there boohoo crying. And she's like, I'm going to give you guys a minute. She walks out. I get up That's to walk dangerous. out. I get up to walk out and he kind of like just like grabbed my what? hand. Don't touch me. And he was like, if you never want to speak to me again, I understand. I'm sorry. So as a nurse... Like this is like, and and I've I've known you for over a year and a half, two years, and I've never I've never heard your story. Mm -hmm. Did he know he was positive? No, he okay. didn't. Um, I actually say that he ended up getting diagnosed twice because he got it from my doctor's appointment, and, and then, then he, he had went to, to go, go get tested, get his own testing. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So he. So I do believe him when he says he did not know. He knew something. Because when, you know, that whole exchange going back and forth of me waiting, trying to figure mm -hmm. out, you know, it came out as far as like the cheating and the multiple people he had been with and things like that. And that somebody said that they might have had something, but it was never like even all the Googling I did of what it might have been. It was never HIV. Okay. It was always something else. Did you have any symptoms? So it's hard to say. Um, not everybody who is what we call zero converting um, has di has um, symptoms, but I ended up getting s really sick December of the year before. So 2015, like October, November, I was really sick. I couldn't hold anything down. Um, and it ended up being my gallbladder was the issue. And they did emergency surgery to take out my gallbladder in December. So they did a surgery and they didn't do an HIV test before the surgery? That's crazy. That's crazy. Where'd you have it? We have. I mean, there is no other. There's no, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing <laughs> else, really. I had my gallbladder removed, but mine was in Lehigh. Lehigh oh. Hospital? Oh, oh yeah, okay. girl. At Lehigh Hospital, they be kidding. <laughs> be no, no, we ain't going to go there. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there. I don't go to Lehigh Hospital. The only, well, I, actually, I was 18. I was 18. Yeah, so. no. I she should, didn't know any no, better. I lived in Lehigh, and I, I drive yeah. everywhere else. However, I did end up having to go to Lehigh Hospital, not to fast forward the story too much. Um, but after diagnosis, about three days later, I attempted suicide and, and that's where Lee I was going to go. I want you to, cause, okay. So we're talking about this nonchalant, mm -hmm. right? But I want you to explain to people what it took for you to get from that moment to you being able to talk about it right now mm -hmm. without boohoo crying, mm -hmm. without all the emotions that come with such a serious diagnosis. Mm -hmm. because, um, so my brother died of AIDS um, he contracted his HIV through <laughs> IV drug use. Mm -hmm. So it was a complete different story. However, um, he passed away 14 years ago. So the medication 14 years ago was completely different from what is now. When my brother got an HIV diagnosis, it was basically a death sentence, right? Mm -hmm. And nowadays it's so much different. So I want people to get all that knowledge. I want to make sure that we inform our audience of, you know, all the changes that the has, advancement yes, that all the advancement, all the with with all the new medication and everything. But more than the physical, the mental. Mm -hmm. So you attempted suicide three days after you found out. Mm -hmm. Tell me yeah. what brought you to that. For me, it was a this isn't the life I chose for myself, and I had gotten bullied so much as a child 
for a number of things that were out of my control, right? So I, get it. I was diagnosed with PCOS at a very young age. Anybody who knows anything about PCOS, it comes with a lot of hormone imbalances. It comes with weight gain. It comes with excess body hair. Pain. Pain, like all kinds of things. So as a child being in the third, fourth grade, and I got buccal hair all over my legs and these other girls don't, and I'm being mm-hmm. teased for it, I spent a lot of my life being teased. And so now when this point came... I was like, okay, great, another thing to me for me to be teased about, for me to be picked on, and at that or point in my life, differently about, yeah, and even you know, as a twenty-six-year-old woman, I had mm-hmm. a lot of self-esteem issues still. Part of the reason why I stayed in that relationship for so long because that relationship was doomed from like month three, <laughs> the month that I had it, that we moved in together it was just doomed for a lot of reasons. Um, but that just speaks to the lack of self-esteem that I had within myself. Um, So for me, it was great. Something else for me to be teased about. This isn't the life I chose for myself. Who's going to love me? I kind of knew it wasn't a death sentence because I had had heard about HIV and, you know, Mm -hmm. medications and things like that. So that wasn't what drove me to it. But it was just that thought of great. Something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. Was that the first and only time that you tried Mm -hmm. it? Yeah. First and only. And then I know that you mentioned that the self the self esteem played mm-hmm. an issue. Mm-hmm. Do you feel we as women stay in a relationship because of low self esteem or because we feel like we can't go and find somebody else? I think it's a little bit of both. I think self esteem issues definitely play a huge part in staying in a relationship that's unhealthy for you and at the same time it's the security of saying, well, at least I have somebody, mm-hmm. even if it's not healthy. Mm-hmm. And I think so one of the one of the many reasons for Parlor Talk was to create a space for everybody to have a platform. Right. But obviously, we're all three of us and our other hosts were women. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I wanted to break the walls here in Southwest Florida was that women don't support women. Mm-hmm. Right. And one of the biggest things that I, or comments that I get, like, if you feel good about yourself, if you post pictures and you're like always like, you know, feeling yourself, Mm -hmm. oh, you're cocky. Oh, you're so full of yourself. Oh, so it's almost like if you have too much confidence or too much self-esteem is bad, Mm -hmm. but then if you have none, it's bad too. And to Mm -hmm. me, it's like, I'd rather have more self-esteem than mm-hmm. have low self-esteem mm-hmm. because at the end of the day nobody's gonna love me the way I love myself right and I feel like the way we teach people how to treat us mm-hmm. is how we treat ourselves right yeah. so yeah. Mm-hmm. how did you go from trying to commit suicide mm-hmm. to being the amazing <laughs> wonderful human being that you are today I mean I've always been the amazing <laughs> wonderful human being. <laughs> um but touché, touché. you know it really just it when it was a fa- it, clearly it was a failed attempt. So once I got to the point of realizing, okay, I'm still here, I had some form of a relationship with a higher power, believing in faith, believing in that there is a God. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, there's still a reason I'm here. What is the reason for? And it really pushed me to look at my life, look at how I played a part. And people hate when I say this, but I had to look at my actions that played a part in me getting this diagnosis. Because at the end of the day, even though I was being faithful and he was not, even after I found out he cheated, I stayed with him. Even after I found out he cheated, I wasn't using any form of barriers or anything like that. So I had to own up in my part in it. I stayed with him for a long time after finding about the cheating. So I had to ask that. All of that forced me to ask myself, why Why? did I put up with those things? Mm -hmm. And how old are you now? I am 34. What would you tell the 26-year-old? Now that you have mm. all the knowledge, all the experience, everything that you've been through mm. now, at your age now, what would you tell your 26-year-old self finding that out? After diagnosis? After diagnosis. I think I would just tell her that everything happens for a reason. Because this diagnosis has taken me to places that I would have never imagined in my wildest dreams. So in in all perspective, you took a negative and turned it into a positive. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a a lot of that negative comes from societal 
Mm -hmm. stigma, right? Because Mm -hmm. as you stated earlier, there's been so many advancements in medications. Like back in the day when we didn't really know, you know, what was causing HIV, how was it being transmitted? How do we treat it? And all of that stuff. It was very much silence equals death because Mm -hmm. if we stay Mm -hmm. quiet about it, it was causing death. Yes. Today, it's really a stigma equals death because there's so much stigma in this world. There's people who still continue Mm -hmm. to judge people based Mm -hmm. off of the diagnosis that that is going to kill someone quicker than anything else because of the advancements in treatment. And as a nurse, I can tell you, um, I mean, I'm going to say it here. I mean, I'm not breaking no HIPAA violation, but I can tell you here in Southwest Florida, the number Mm -hmm. of women with herpes and gonorrhea is overwhelming. Yeah. Well, I mean, even at one point... Overwhelming. And I get it that, yeah, you can treat herpes and gonorrhea, Mm -hmm. but the problem is this. Most of the women that are... I used to work in mom baby, Mm -hmm. so I would get moms that just delivered Mm -hmm. with herpes and gonorrhea, Mm -hmm. and they would get treatment, but their partners wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So they would just get reinfected. And just the lack of education, just the lack of... I don't know, like to me, it's crazy and mind blowing that you get this diagnosed, you get antibiotics, but you won't hold your partner accountable. Mm -hmm. Like to me, that's crazy. Well, and I mean, it depends on the situation, too. If it's a domestic violence situation, what woman is going to be able to hold that individual to be able to get treatment as well? So, I mean, I think there's a number of things, but at least, you know, they're at least trying to do something to make sure that they're not getting the transmission again, right? So one thing that I've come to learn, especially within like STD, STI spaces, community is very big on language. So like, to me, the word infected doesn't bother me, but to Mm -hmm. a lot of people, the word infected does because, and I, you know, Mm -hmm. learned this through going through extensive like HIV education. When you think of the word infected, you think of like something that's like pussing and oozy and nasty. mm -hmm. Right. Um, And a lot of people take that into context and say, when you say I'm infected with something, that's what you think of when you think of me and that I'm a person Mm -hmm, first. mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things when it comes to even just language that we're still trying to break barriers on and to normalize, like realizing at the end of the day, we are still people regardless of what our diagnosis is. Well, I am so (laughs) glad that you were not successful. (laughs) Yeah. And me too. (laughs) Definitely. There is a purpose, right. For your Mm -hmm. life. Yeah. There is a reason and there's somewhere you are going to reach so many people and you are changing so many people's lives that that's unbelievable. And like that award that you got yesterday, that's like nothing compared to everything that's coming to you. And because of that, I would like to celebrate. Can I um, get my um, my we're going to celebrate. I so I got a wait, wait, not yet. (laughs) I got a bottle for my birthday Aww. and it's so pretty and cute that I said I wasn't going to open it. But then I was as I was getting dressed today, I kept looking at it and I was like, I'm just going to open that because we need to celebrate. Aww. We need to. It's Hispanic Heritage Month. Yes. One. We both got awards. Woo, congratulations. And <laughs> I just want to celebrate. Okay. So whoop, whoop, yeah, whoop. I'm we got a bottle. We got a bottle. Oh, that's hopefully pretty. that's like, yeah. Oh, and it's glittery. Right. Ooh, See how cute. Yes, Ooh. girl. So I just I, I better say this before I get my head chewed up. My cousin Lisette um <laughs> gave me this for my birthday. And I'm gonna open it now. So because I want to celebrate with my friends. Okay, and don't, don't take a light. So off. we're going to go into our segment. Oh, this is a little spicy, whatever it's called. You ready, Mr. Producer? We're going to go to Spicy Talk. And this is where our audience can chime in and you guys get to participate as well. Thank you so much for coming, guys. They've been so good and quiet in the background. Yeah, My people supporting me. I love y'all. The camera can't see y'all, but All I right. love y'all. Hopefully this doesn't go to like, oh, no. Gosh. Wait, Do we have to duck? Duck. Like, me hide Wait, the- ooh, ooh. Ooh, shit. Ooh, ooh, shit. Ooh, ooh. I was going to say. <laughs> Hug okay. it down. All right, to my friend. Yay. No, nope, you're good, you're good, you're good. You're good. I'm going to serve myself first because, you know. <laughs> Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. You guys want bubbly? No. 
I'm a little afraid for this next segment. I'm not going to lie. Are you? A little bit. Why? It's, I mean, I don't know. So y'all want to hear something real, real, real yeah. funny? So I got asked to be interviewed for like an online um platform that's kind of like a magazine but it's all online based mm-hmm. and it was about you equals you and they were doing like this segment and this particular one <laughs> had to do with she's still a latina and a woman <laughs> listen <laughs> that is hiv positive and how you equals you impact so anyway long story short i'm having this conversation with this guy that's interviewing me to ask me all these questions about my sex life and here's my mother sitting in the driver's seat and I'm having to talk about a guy asking me is it safe to go down on me with my mother sitting next to me so I'm just I don't know this makes yeah. me feel well, like your I'm mom's back not here. here mom's not here did mom's she watch right. the podcast oh she's, she's gonna watch she this might, podcast yeah. it don't matter so, she you're grown I you're had grown. you're 34 years old that starting this once we started this segment mm-hmm. I told my mom I was like mom the last 15 minutes of the podcast don't watch it <laughs> <laughs> And she's That's like, a safe bet. She's like, is there like why? a disclaimer? I didn't notice a disclaimer on the last couple ones. Maybe there needs to be like a. And I was like, and I was like, because you know, we're talking grown stuff that I don't talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the that was the part for me. Like, I didn't grow up talking to my mother about like we don't in the Spanish activity. community. I mean, girl, I was pregnant at fourteen. Like, my mom didn't tell me about the birds and the beads. I I learned that on the streets. That's why I got girl, pregnant when so I got early. My period for the first time. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what was happening, and I screamed. I was still in Jersey. Screamed for Wait, my how mother. Old were you? I was thirteen. Oh, see, I was very 12, young. 13? I was I was nine. Yeesh. I. 12, 13, I think, yeah. And I screamed, here comes my father knocking on the door. I'm like, I didn't call for you. (laughs) I called for my mommy. Right, because I didn't know what the heck was happening because we didn't talk. I never, Never. I didn't even know a period was a thing. So I want to shout out Ace Metaphor. I swear to God, one of these days he's going to see one of our episodes. You just have to start tagging. Yes, we need to start because, like, I actually, I'm a huge fan of Ace Metaphor. So I went out Mm -hmm. and purchased myself. His cards. Okay. So that's where we get our questions from. Okay. So I'm going to go first. You're going to go first? I'll okay. go first. <clears throat> you want to surprise your partner sexually with a treat. What would that be and why? <sighs> so. Who's been married. I know. I keep it spicy though. Because, you know, you can't get tired of me. I change it up all the time. <laughs> um, that just means you're bipolar. I'm bipolar. Ooh. That means I'm bipolar? No. I just like to give my man different versions of me. Split into different personalities, different people. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, again, I've been married 30 years, so I don't. I think we've tried everything and done everything, but... Um, so when we lived in Jersey, right, they had this motel... Um, and this motel had theme rooms. Oh. Yes. One mm. was like a jungle. Another one was like... Um, I see where this is going. Like I Cleopatra. Oh. So every now and then, I would book one of those rooms, and I would dress the part to match the theme room. That was a lot of fun. They should have something like that here. They should. Maybe I should invest into something like that. You should. But yeah, so I like, I like a lot of... Um, I like to dress up. Like, I like to like dress t-shirt. up and... Like role play, so I, I so if I was to do a treat, I would do like an like a costume, Cleopatra, something real sexy, and do that. Yeah. Um, do, you want me, you need, do I need to read it again? Yeah. Okay. You want to surprise your partner sexually with a treat? What would that be, and why? And this is Nakisha's favorite part of the podcast. You know, I don't think. I think I'm gonna do a, something a little different this time. See, there you oh, go again. So Every episode, up, you we want, just be changing up the no, questions. No, 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 it's not the question. Every episode, she comes Y'all up with something it. new. Y'all ask for I it. I know. We need to work. Uh, be careful what we ask for. Okay, go ahead. I'm scared. I don't think What's I would happening? do anything sexually. Okay. I think I would just. But that's ask. not the question, though. No, but hold on. I mean, it should lead to sex, though. Oh, okay. It will lead to. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. 
ask him to teach me how to play video games. <laughs> really? Is that oh a thing? God. That's like a it, turn on? If they're gamers, of course. Let's see. Okay, I'm way older than you guys. No, I'm... I'm, I'm Dan, oh, you know what? If my husband says, let's dance some salsa. That viste, viste, see? Yeah, but salsa, I, I, li I, I think of salsa and I think already, you know. Like sensual. It's sensual, very sensual, you know? Yes. So, but yeah. I don't find nothing sexy about no freaking video games. I'm sorry. I don't either. But the thing of it is, is that's what they're interested in. No, he don't like it. Okay, see? I see. See, see? you guys. See, see you youngins teaching me audience something. Audience participation, come through. Yes. <laughs> I see it, I see it. I see it. <laughs> so what he's saying is grab okay. the remote control tonight. <laughs> Okay. All right, Ashley. Oh, teaching okay. me something. See? Okay. Stepping into his space. Look, okay. that's yeah. not usually what I would step into, but I'm, I'm learning. As a and treat. I'm You're giving him a treat. Yeah. Got I'm it. Okay. See that? How about you? Doesn't mean it's going to happen, though. <laughs> <laughs> don't, be be like, don't be You could keep the chills to yourself, sir. Just for the podcast. <laughs> don't, don't get excited. Keep the chills to yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a partner, so can I just use that as my out? I don't no. Have a partner. no. If you had a partner, Ay, what would you do? Read the question again. <laughs> How would I spice it? What was the question? You want to surprise your partner sexually with a treat. What would that be and why? I would maybe get like a swing or something. Ooh. Like, yes. You know, add in a little, not a toy. I'm not a toy fan, mm -hmm. but add in something just to, you know. Add a little extra layer. You're probably not using the right toys, but we'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Somebody else's question. Uh, me? I Does anybody from the audience would go. like to answer that? Anybody oh, yeah. from the audience? You guys got to think. You should um, answer, though. All right. You want to surprise your partner sexually with a treat. What would that be and why? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. Dang. Okay. Okay. Very oh good. God. You have any more? <laughs> <laughs> that is giving me very much like grapefruit vibes yes. from girls. Yes. 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 Yeah. Grapefruit. Mm -hmm. if, if anybody don't know about the grapefruit, you need to know. Okay. Just don't have their outcome. That yeah, bad. I know. Mm -hmm. Make sure you wash after. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, you have to bust a nut or come to save your life. Please don't ask who we're calling. Please don't ask <laughs> who we're calling. Would it take okay. penetration, oral sex, or hand to make it happen? Oral. 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 Oral, hands down. I'm so glad she didn't ask who yeah. we were calling. I was afraid. <laughs> so afraid. Yeah. Oral. oral. That's why when we had um, our networking event, which we will have another one, so make sure you stay tuned. Um, Shane, let's plug. Um, as we're <laughs> sitting next to the plug. Just make sure um. that I'm back. Just make sure I'm back in Florida, please. Oh, you need to come back more often. Hi. Um, like the day when we had the networking event and we talked about the size matter. <laughs> From a woman's perspective, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's like, you know, is the is the is the motion of the ocean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. no, sometimes mm -hmm. that I've sometimes heard. That me han contado, me, I ain't gonna me lie. han contado that no. it's just painful. So no, yeah. when I was like 19, I was with a Jamaican, and he was a very well endowed, blessed, and it wasn't fun. Yeah, see, okay, so see, guys, it doesn't it's matter. Yeah. yeah, get your other skills popping. Yes. Facts. Get <laughs> get your other skills. Popping. All right, what's that? Shit matters. <laughs> God. The size matters? The size does matter. I don't want no little pee-pee. I agree. <laughs> I don't want no little pee-pee. 
Okay. You still, yes, you can. Pleasure. Okay, okay, we you we, can pleasure we, me by mouth. But we you established still have to pleasure that before. Me by yes, yeah. we don't. We're not, when we say size don't matter. We're talking about normal size. A normal size is five Average, inches. Yeah, we're not talking about micro Smaller penises. Than five, yeah. Well, yeah. But see, you get the little micro penises. Then that matters. Hopes up. That, like I guess uh, that matters. The bitch said She's size like, don't, don't matter. No, no it right, does right. matter. We're talking about norm, norm with average. A no- There's no normal average. Five average. Inches as a or nurse, more. average. As a nurse, five within inches normal or more. limits. <laughs> you have to be this tall to, <laughs> to ride, ride the, the ride. Oh my god! <laughs> How big you have to be to ride your ride? <laughs> we ain't gonna go there. I, I was gonna oh, say, oh, please go oh, there. okay, I okay. Go there. <laughs> All right, what was? Did you read your question? I, no, I didn't. Read okay, my read question. your question. Okay. Do you prefer to be the dominant one or the submissive one in the bedroom? Submissive. I need yeah. both. Mm. I need both. Nah. I'm 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 perfectly comfortable. So in, I want I, you to take mm, control. I'm in I'm in a very traditional marriage. I've been with my husband. What is traditional? Well, what okay, because we've gone this route before. <laughs> uh oh. Old school traditional where the man wears the pants. I know I'm gonna get a whole lot of slack for this, but you gotta L- 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 go let me finish let me finish you happy right. exactly well see this is what works in my household right. my husband is the head of the fa- uh, head of the household what he's what he says goes right mm-hmm. again i've always said this the, i'm the neck you can't turn the head without the neck mm-hmm. anyways but um if he's the dominant in everything else i'm gonna need you to be dominant in the bedroom as well yeah. that does not mean that i can't take control that i can't mm-hmm. initiate that i'm just mm-hmm. gonna lay there like a month no that's not what that means what what that means is my personal preference i need a man's man's and in my growing up and in my upbringing my culture whatever you want to call it my personal liking i need my man to be dominant for me i like a man that's dominant once you've learned what works for yes. me. Like in the beginning, exactly. it needs to be a little bit of you mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. submissive to learn what works for me, mm-hmm. what um, positions I My like. My husband knows like me in and out. Once you know, I fully expect for you to, to take be. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm, I don't know. I mean. I don't know. You seem a little aggressive lately. I, mm. Uh-oh. I be feeling sorry for my boy. Ooh. Look, that's part of Maybe being, he likes uh, it. No, he don't. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> she just putting I like just out there. See the eyeballs. <laughs> no. Um, Save me. <laughs> no. But I okay, well, you yeah, gonna have I to give you a, a cold. To- I was gonna say we need <laughs> a- <laughs> She's like, We need no, a no safe words. cold. You need to text me be like help. <laughs> Elevate. Is it the makeup sex that you like better? She, uh, she's a masochist. She wants to be choked. Slept me out. She she wants to be choked. She's a ma- yeah. She's a masochist. I I. I mean, I don't like it a little. I don't want you to choke me out where I'm oh, not breathing. No. But yeah, I no. like it a little. But you know, the little pressure right here. You know, just enough. Like the smacking. Yeah. Yes. Just enough. We we let's not go down that We're, rabbit hole because we've you know, not where you're like the next day coughing and throat sore, mm-hmm. but you mm-hmm. know. Just right, right. Yeah. Take you all the way out. <laughs> <laughs> but the, and then and then see too what you do is I the like, trachea. You place the hand. Uh, if you're fit. Choking anybody is completely wrong. I mean, if it's two consenting adults that are consenting to choking, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, just, however... You need to learn, like I said earlier, you need to learn words. what I like. Save you words. You need to learn what... Pineapple! <laughs> you, you, listen, no, no, okay, so can we really talk about what the problem is? Mm-hmm. The problem is, he. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, he's black, mm-hmm. she white and Hispanic, but... Mm-hmm. White. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if he chokes her a little too much and she passes out and he has to call nine one one, am I right? I'll write a fucking note before sex. 
Put it in your will. <laughs> She's gonna get you. If I go out being choked by icy, I ask for it. <laughs> but she, yes. Yeah, no. Yeah, facts. Look, I, I will video record it. This is Inya Phoenix, a.k.a. Ashley Ortiz. Today is 10-2-2023. I have allowed blah, 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 to give me, you know, to, to choke, choke you. me out, you know. <laughs> Look, it's video. You have the proof on video. It's just like, do it. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sticking I'm sticking to defending my boy. She sounds a little frustrated. We live in a, She's we, like, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a Nike commercial. Just do it. I don't think that's what they meant. <laughs> I mean, but that's a good idea, no, though. It's gotta be a skit. Yeah. But that's a good idea, oh, though. Oh All right. Well, we want to thank you so, so much for coming and being the amazing human being that you are. Thank you for doing the job that you do. You. Not only All are you making a difference, but you also support other women entrepreneurs local talent like what you're doing right now hey. with Blue No. Yes, that's she is a friend of the podcast as well. Um, Shout out to our. Um, we have someone in the audience who actually created this. Oh, okay. Actually, okay. So I'm supporting two local artists. Right nice. Now. Look at you. Yes, that's what Ooh. we're talking about. Throw that plug in for you. Yes. Fans. <laughs> um. So thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. We love you. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. Even I've been waiting. I mean, I, I've been I waiting. I knew she was gonna say it. You knew I, I was gonna say it because I put it on Facebook. Yeah, but first you've been Christian, busy though. First Christian was like, "What I got to do to get on there?" I was like, "Christian, that's what I'm saying." Like, yo, how we how like, we ain't on there yet? best friend and I still haven't been in Facts, there. that part. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody your social media handles, how they can reach you, remind them about what you do, your businesses and stuff like that. Yes. So you can find me at Mari G Solutions, Mari with an I, not a Y, M-A-R-I-G Solutions with an S on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, like all of that stuff. But I'm really only on Instagram and Facebook. Um you can reach me on socials. You can call me. You can email me. Um, a lot of my work, again, is centered around HIV education, advocacy, speaking, body positivity, self-love. And then if you need help with getting your credit right, if you need to get your estate planning documents in place, or if you just need to go solar for your home, I'm your girl. Yes. Mm-mm-mm. Well, thank you so much, guys, for chiming in. Please remember the only and free way to help us grow is by liking, subscribing, sharing, and once you do all that, make sure you hit that little bell button so that you can get reminded whenever oh, we she, post. she remembered. <laughs> I remember. See, I'm on point today. See? Oh, okay. It's because I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, again, Parlor Talk is a platform for us to support our local community. Um, we like to bring in guests that have either businesses themselves or are helping in the community. We strive to just be a platform for our community to come in and share their businesses, um, any events that you're planning, you could come and promote it here. We are currently looking for sponsorship. So if you're interested, please hit any one of us and we will be happy to forward the information for sponsorship. I am your girl, D Dominguez. We will see you next week. Thank you so much. And this is your girl, Inya Phoenix, uh, back tracking on what D said for sponsors. If you sponsor a part of talk, John Diamond's mic or uh, John, John Michael. Michael's diamond. You know what I mean. This is a Spanish thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thinking in Spanish. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to be, you know, trying not to feel left out. Um, if you sponsor with us, he will be giving you a hundred dollar gift certificate as well as Bound by Beauty. If you sponsor with Parlor Talk as well, you'll be getting a fifty dollar gift certificate to Bound by Beauty for any eyelash and facials and Mm -hmm. everything services um so hit one of us up if you guys are interested and then we'll get you guys connected to them as well for those gift certificates catch me at any phoenix on all social media platforms if you have a business your house need cleaned i have (laughs) a cleaner who is eager to start up um, any transportation services to and from doctor's appointments. If you I don't know about the club, I would have to talk to her. That's another <laughs> thing. We could have her. Yeah. Transportation to and from clubs. Yes. Um, hit me up. <laughs> she gonna have to be ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom is starting a cleaning and transportation business. Courtesy of EX3 and me helping guiding her out. So hit me up if you guys are interested in that as well. We'll see you next episode. 
Deuces. Money showed up. Hey.